The whole strategy of the Conservatives in this election was to hoover up as much of the Leave vote as it possibly could. So it's got to help them if the leader of the Brexit party is turning around and saying he's not going to run in their seats. But it is messier than that because he will be uh, running in those seats that some of the, the Tories want to gain, some of them off Labour, some of them off uh, the SNP and others maybe. Any non-Conservative uh, held seat, he's going to be running there. But... And there is a danger, of course, that the Tory party vote hemorrhages in those seats. But, but Nigel Farage today is repeating the very attack line that the Tories have been using against the Brexit party. He's effectively saying that if you vote uh, for the Brexit party, then there's a danger of losing uh, Brexit altogether because a Remain alliance could come in and that could bleed into uh, the consciousness of people who do have a Brexit party uh, candidate available to them. And that is a great danger for him. He's also going to lose some profile because he's not actually standing in all the seats uh, across the country. That could hurt him as well. A bit of air going out of the Brexit party ball and some air has gone out of it already. Here's how Nigel Farage announced his whopper of a U-turn. Nigel Farage had dreaded this moment. A climb down from a politician of protest unused to such things. And after weeks of threatening Boris Johnson with this. We will fight you in every single seat up and down the length and breadth of the United Kingdom. This morning in Hartlepool, Nigel Farage dumped that approach and told half his candidates they were no longer standing. The Brexit Party will not contest the 317 seats the Conservatives won at the last election. But what we will do is concentrate our total effort into all of the seats that are held by the Labour Party, who have completely broken their manifesto pledge in 2017 to respect the result of the referendum. And we will also take on the rest of the Remainer parties. Nigel Farage insisted what changed his mind was a video message Boris Johnson tweeted out last night, which seems to have been produced explicitly to give Nigel Farage some cover for his embarrassing U-turn. I want to stress that that will be a, a straightforward free trade agreement, not based on any kind of political alignment. I thought to myself overnight, well, that actually sounds a bit more like the Brexit that we voted for. And we will not extend the transition period beyond the end of 2020. At least it was a clear, unequivocal statement from him that we're not going on beyond the end of 2020. He admitted some might think that promise not worth much, but the threat to Brexit required he stand down half his troops. This announcement today prevents a second referendum from happening and that to me I think right now is the single most important thing in our country. So in a sense we now have a leave alliance. It's just that we've done it unilaterally. <laughs> Boris Johnson campaigning in Wolverhampton today stole Nigel Farage's regular pub photo backdrop. Well, I'm not allowed to drink till Brexit's done. <laughs> and hopes he can steal many of his voters too. Come on, did you give him a ring? Have you done a deal? Uh, look, uh, I, absolutely not. But uh, I, what I can say is that uh, I, I'm glad that there is a recognition uh, that there's only one way to get Brexit done, and that is to vote for us and, and to vote for the Conservatives. In those seats that Nigel Farage and the Brexit Party are still standing in, though they are seats the Conservatives need to gain, and on paper it's not great that the Brexit Party is standing in them, what you've seen, what you've seen today is Nigel Farage effectively agreeing with the Conservative attack message on the Brexit Party, that a vote for the Brexit Party means undermines Brexit and potentially lets Jeremy Corbyn... He's almost telling Tory defectors not to come near him. It, it, it effectively is, and you know, the Brexit Party would have justified that to themselves today by saying, actually, you know, this only applies to the 317 seats, we're going to fight the others. Voters don't see things in terms of the seat they're in. They see it in terms of what they've seen on TV. And, you know, up until now, they've been able to turn on the TV, see Nigel Farage saying, those Tory attack lines are rubbish. This time, they're looking at it, and Nigel Farage is basically admitting that a vote for Brexit Party undermines Brexit. Labour held West Bromwich West is a seat where Nigel Farage is planning to put up a candidate. I did think of Nigel Farage was all right at one point, but, but now he just seems to come in, going out of it, then coming back, then going out and coming back. 
if you had to choose between Conservatives and the Brexit Party, if it was... If... It'd be Brexit. Brexit, definitely. Why Brexit Party over the Conservatives? I just don't think you trust the Conservatives, anything they say. I'm putting my faith in Boris. You're not tempted by the Brexit Party? No. I would, but I think that'll just mean possibly Labour or... You, you know what I mean? And I don't really want Labour to get in. Some Tories tonight called for Nigel Farage to leave the field altogether and stand down all his candidates. The Brexit Party said that wasn't going to happen. Gary Gibbon reporting. Now, earlier I spoke to the Brexit Party chairman, Richard Tice, and began by asking him if his party was going to split the Leave vote in Labour marginal seats. You know, there are well over 100 seats, Labour-held seats, that they've held for, give or take, 100 years, that the Tories have never won and never will. So, you know, the suggestion that we're taking away, uh, you know, these seats from the Tories is nonsense, complete nonsense. 635 or whatever, the full number of uh, candidates right across the board, uh, you th also decry the Johnson deal as a bad, in fact, not even a Brexit. And then, a few days later, you say, well, after all, it is a Brexit, because Mr Johnson said something last night, one sentence, I might say, uh, and that's fine for us. You've been rejecting, 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 you now accept, and you suddenly pull back from what you announced a whole week ago. Well, let's be very clear, John, just to clarify, we announced that we are ready to stand 600 candidates, and we were, and we've always been ready. We've been ready, actually, to do that, as we announced from August. But we've always said that the best way to get a proper Brexit is to have a leave alliance. We concluded that, actually, we could make that judgment unilaterally, and, actually, there have been some significant differences in what the government, members of Cabinet and the Prime Minister have said that has, uh, that has given us... Uh, comfort and reassurance that our concerns that actually they are moving that way that they are going to be addressed but we still of course yes you know there's one thing saying things we want to get members of parliament uh, into the house of commons so that we can actually be sure about it and to hold them to account and that's could, what we're could, saying could, to voters uh, in all the other seats yeah could you describe the talks you've had with ministers i mean what, what sort of extent of conversation yeah, but, uh, have you had very very simple john zero very well, simple, that's John. that's an incredible Absolutely statement, none, isn't it? Zero. Well, what John, you... John, are you calling me a liar? No, no, I'm John, sure you you're telling the truth. I'm sure you're telling Fine. the truth. Then, thank you, then I'm telling the truth. I'm but, telling I mean, the truth, John. Yeah, zero. But you are changing your policy on the basis of no conversations with the government at all, no alliance, no kind of agreement, and, hey, presto, here we are, one week after you announced you were going to challenge in every single seat, tonight, no, no, we're only going to do half of them. Well, I've just explained, John, but I'll reiterate it uh, for those who are not clear, that we said we're ready to stand everywhere. These were our real concerns about this arrangement. But actually, the government has moved in terms of what it has said in the last week, uh, in terms of uh, that we're definitely not going to extend the transition. I've been saying for weeks I was you know, really concerned about that. And the government's made it absolutely clear that actually it's going to be based, the, the future arrangement will be based on a simple free trade deal, which, of course, is what all Brexiteers have always ever wanted. All you are relying upon is a few public statements. You have no private evidence at all to support what you're doing. Correct. But what I'm doing, actually, John, and I'm asking you, I, I, I'm using a thing called trust. But what I want to do is to persuade voters uh, in, in the, uh, the seats that are held by Remain parties who want to stop Brexit, I want to persuade those voters, do you know what, in order to make sure that that trust is actually delivered in concrete send some Brexit Party MPs to the House of Commons. You trusted the Prime Minister to take Britain out of the European Union on the 31st of October. It did not happen and was never going to happen, as you well Correct. know. Uh, yeah, but now you're trusting well, him for one uh, sentence. It, yeah, look, look. Uh, well, actually, in, in fairness, um, there's no question that the Prime Minister tried to get the country out of the European Union on the 31st. We never said he wasn't trying. We always knew he was. He got he was completely going to die bottled in, a ditch. in um, Yeah, but uh, the reality is the Ben Act completely scuppered him. And when that happened, we knew that, and that's why we wanted to make sure, you know, we wanted a general election so we can get on with it. Richard Tice, thank you very much for talking with us. Great pleasure.